What is the second thing you learn when learning to code? Well, just after that print hello world that is. Hi, I'm Stuart. I'm going to show you some coding fundamentals. You will learn how to store data and variables. Yes, well, did you know you could also store more than just strings and numbers in those variables? Let's talk about data structures in Python and what they are, how they are, and when they are used. Here, we're going to look at lists, dictionaries, and sets. Let's get started. Let's kick things off with lists. So let's imagine, for example, that we're going to organize a superhero meet and greet. This sounds really cool. A list in Python is perfect for keeping track of the guests and our lineup. Lists in Python are ordered collections of elements, which means that they can hold elements of different data types, making them versatile for various tasks. So let's walk through some list operations, starting simple and getting a little bit more complex. So first of all, we're going to build this list. And now we're going to add a latecomer to the list. Here, we're using the append method to add Spider-Man to our guest list. Append always adds the new item to the end of the list. This is perfect in this example when we don't care about the specific position of the new item. We just want to have it included in our list. After this operation with Spider-Man, this will be the last element in our list. However, we can insert at specific positions because sometimes we want to have more control of where we add this new item. That's where insert comes in really, really handy. The first argument, which is zero in this case, specifies the index where to add the new item. And so by using zero, we're saying put Thor at the very beginning of our list. All other items will be shifted completely to the right. So this is really useful when the order of your list really matters to you. Like if you're arranging guests by arrival, time, or, you know, in this case, importance. We can also remove a guest. So huh, it looks like Black Panther can't make it to our party. So here we're going to use the remove method to take him off our guest list. Remove searches the first occurrence and then of the specified item and removes it from the list. If the item appears multiple times, only the first instance is removed, so we must keep that in mind. If the item isn't in the list, Python will raise a value error, so it's often safe to check if the item is in the list before trying to remove it. We can also sort our guests out. So, here in this example, let's organize our guests alphabetically. The sort method arranges the items in the list in ascending order. For strings, this means alphabetical order. For numbers, it will be numerical order. Sort will modify the list in place, meaning it changes the original list rather than creating a new one. If you want to keep the original order and create a new sorted list, you could use the sorted function instead. Okay, so let's look at some more advanced list operations because we've mastered the basics now. We can look at list comprehensions to create a new list. So here, this is a list comprehension. It's a powerful and concise way to create new lists. It's like a compact for loop. Here, we're creating a new list where each element is the length of the corresponding hero's name. List comprehensions. Now, these are really great for transforming data or filtering lists. They're often more readable and faster than equivalents for, say, loops. Next, we'll look at list comprehensions for, say, a, a seating chart as a good example. This is a nested list comprehension. It's like having a loop inside of another loop. We're creating all possible pairs of heroes for seating arrangements, excluding pairs of the same hero. This is really useful when you need to generate combinations of items for more than two or more lists. In this case, it could help us plan seating arrangements where no hero sits next to themselves. Using map and lambda, we can use these for quick transformations. 
Here, we're combining two powerful Python features, map and lambda functions. Map applies a function to every item in, in the irritable and in the lambda function. It is an anonymous function, if you like. That converts this string to uppercase in this example. This combo is great for applying crit transformations to your data. It's especially useful when you need to apply a simple operation to every item in your list. As we've seen, lists are incredibly versatile. They're great for ordering data and handle complex and simple operations. So now we'll move on to dictionaries. Dictionaries in Python are unordered collections of key value pairs. Each key must be unique and it's used to access the corresponding value. So dictionaries, they allow us to associate keys with values. Let's use them to keep track of each hero's superpower and also some additional information. This is a nested dictionary. Each hero, which is the outer key, is associated with another dictionary containing their power and strength level. What this structure does is it allows us to organize complex and related data in a very logical way. So let's explore some more dictionary operations. So let's start with accessing the nested data. To access nested data in a dictionary, we use multiple square brackets. The first bracket accesses the outer dictionary with the key Spider-Man, and the second accesses the inner dictionary with the key Strength. So what this does is it allows us to drill down into our data structure and extract specific pieces of information. Now, say we wanted to add a new hero. Adding a new key value pair to a dictionary is pretty straightforward. We simply assign a value to a new key. If the key does already exist, this would update the existing value. This flexibility here allows us to expand our data set so we can get information about new heroes. But say we wanted to update information. Here, we're updating a value in our nested dictionary. First, we access the Iron Man dictionary, then the strength key within it. And we can increase its value by one. What this does is it shows how we can modify deeply nested data, which is useful when we're updating specific attributes of our complex data structure. Okay, so now let's look at some more advanced dictionary operations and we'll start with dictionary comprehensions. This is a dictionary comprehension. Similar to a list comprehension, it's concise in a very good way to create a new dictionary. Here we're creating a new dictionary that only contains the hero's names and their strength levels. This is super useful when you want to extract specific data from a more complex data structure. We can also merge dictionaries and we can do this with update. The update method allows us to merge two dictionaries. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add information about our two new heroes to our existing hero underscore info dictionary. If any keys in the new heroes exist already or within hero information, they would be updated with the new values. So this is a super quick way to combine data also from multiple sources. Now we can look at default dict for automating information. Default dict is a subclass of dict that calls a fat tree to supply missing values. Here what we're doing is using an up to automatically create an empty list when we access that key, this doesn't exist yet. So when would this be useful? Well, this is really useful if you're going to be grouping data and don't know all the groups in advance. It saves you from having to check if a key exists before having to append to its list. So dictionaries here, as we've seen, are super powerful for organizing complex and related data. They're really, really useful if you need to quickly look up information based on a unique key. So sets in Python are unordered collections of unique elements. They're like mathematical sets where each element can only appear once. 
This makes them really handy for operations like finding unique values in a list or performing set operations like union, intersection, and difference. So back to our superhero uh, party for a second. We want to give out unique party favors because who doesn't love a good party favor? This is where sets are really shine. They ensure that each item appears only once. So here, we're going to create a set of party favors. Note that we use curly braces here to define a set. This is super similar to dictionaries, but without the key value pairs. Sets are unordered and contain no duplicate elements. So first of all, let's explore operations. Adding items. So notice here that duplicates are going to be ignored. The add method adds a item to our set. Now, if we try to add cape again, it's ignored because sets store unique items. So this is really, really useful when you want to ensure you don't have any duplicates in your collection. Also, notice that boots is added successfully because here, this is a new item. We can also remove items too. And we do this with the remove method. What this does is it takes out a specific item from the set. If the item doesn't exist, what will happen is we will get a key error. There's also a discard method. Now, what this does is it doesn't raise an error if the item isn't found, but it's useful when you're not sure if the item even exists within the set. So that's just something just to keep in your sleep there as an idea. So now let's look at a few more advanced um, set operations here. We'll start by looking at operations with multiple sets. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to look at something which is called unique underscore two Avengers. And we're going to look at this um, particular key piece of code. Here, we're going to demonstrate several set options. Uh, what the first one is going to be union. What this does is it combines all unique items from multiple sets. The next thing we're going to look at is intersection. And intersection finds items that are common to both sets. Difference finds items that are in one set, but not in the other. So there are three really cool things that we can do with sets. These operations are really, really useful. And they're great for comparing, combining different collections of items. Next, we could use um, sets for efficient lookup. Here in this piece of code, this demonstrates how sets can be used for efficient membership testing. What we're going to do here is we're going to check if an item is in a set. It's much faster than checking if it's in a list, especially for large collections. Here, we're going to use list comprehensions with a set membership to test to quickly find out which heroes are in our guest list and also in Avengers. So now let's look at set comprehensions. This is really similar to list and dictionary comprehensions. We can use set comprehensions to create sets in a concise way. Here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a set of heroes whose names are no longer than seven characters. This is a great way to filter data and ensure uniqueness in just one step. Sets are fantastic for ensuring uniqueness and performing efficient membership tasks and tests and also mathematical set operations. We've journeyed from basics to some more advanced concepts in Python data structures. Remember here, the key takeaways are, lists are great for ordered data and sequential operations. Dictionaries, they really excel at organizing related data for quick lookup, and sets ensure uniqueness and perform efficient set operation. Each structure has its own strengths, just like our superheroes and choosing the right one can make your code more efficient and readable. So now instead of being able to just you know, print your name, you can actually work with complex data structures and make sure your application is using the right data in, in the right way. It's a good thing to practice these ideas to improve your overall coding skills. If you enjoyed this video or want to see more hands-on technical content, be sure to like this video and subscribe to the AWS Developers YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.